Occasionally you hear stories about places and how wild they are, how spectacular they are. Sometimes these stories pan out, sometimes they don't. The Wessel Islands is one place that does live up to the myth. Knifing out for 100 kilometres off the coast of northeast Arnhem Land, it's one of the most remote places on Earth. A place that humans have conceded to the big crocodiles and sharks that call it home. Fishing here is the stuff of wild fantasy. Stories that have been passed down from the handful of sailors and fishermen that have made it out that far say the very tip, called Cape Wessel, has some of the best Spanish mackerel fishing in the world. Spanish mackerel are known to fishermen as Spaniards. They hunt in packs and tear prey apart with a mouthful of razor teeth. They are the apex blue water predators. And nothing in this world is more appealing to us than big predatory fish in wild places. Reaching Cape Wessel takes more than a day. So our first contact with the island was finding a camp halfway up. Our good mate and local sea ranger, Daryl Lacey, offered to guide us to the top. Having Daz with us also gave us a wealth of knowledge and experience of this region. So we're currently on the Wessel Islands at the moment and behind us is what you can see is a uh, geological phenomenon called the hole in the wall. The Wessel Islands are a wall of islands that run for 100 k's north off the Northern Territory and because the tide flows east-west this is one of the only two places where the tide gets to rush in between. And because it's only so narrow, how far would that be, Morgs? 300 uh, metres? 100 metres. 200? 200. Maybe 200 metres, so the tide just barrels through here. It's really treacherous. What's the Yungle name, Daz, for this joint? So the whole of Wessel Island is called Mertjanba, mm -hmm. and um, this place, hole in the wall, is called Radakala. Okay. And we've got Daz coming along again for this part of the journey because in our little boat, our 4.2 metre boat, would not be a safe move coming out by our, ourselves. He's brought his uh, boat, which is a whole lot bigger than ours, so he's able to help us with the uh, logistics of fuel and distance. Our main goal is actually head to Cape Wessel, which is the very tip of the Wessel Islands, the most northerly point of the Northern Territory. It's where the last bit of land uh, hits the oceanic waters, and what happens there is that you get a lot of big fish congregating around that point. So we'll spend the night here, have a little bit of fish, and um, catch some dinner. Get some dinner. This is just a conveyor belt of bait running through this small gap here. And underneath us is these undercut ledges. So there's all these reef fish that are just Hiding under here. Oh, yep. yep, yep. Crawl trout, I think. Trout, yeah. Trout. Oh, he's going under the ledge. Oh, oh. Get him in. He's going under. Oh, yes. Oh, yep. oh Jimmo's on. Oh, big, oh, coral big coral monster trout. Oh, oh Simo. Oh, yeah, that is a coral trout. And this fella is some of the best eating you'll get in the Northern Territory. Number one for mine, Morgs. Yeah. Definitely number one for Iridescent one. blue dots are just incredible. incredible fish. Look at that. It's like a wolf. I think he may be dinner. I think he's going to be on the plate tonight. Yeah. Some breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs. Look at that. Glorious fish. You know, the other beauty about travelling along these remote islands is that around every corner and around every bay there's something new. Um, you know, Daz has been around this area and knows a fair bit and we're hoping to learn a bit more off him. Daz is actually a sea ranger as well, aren't you Daz? Do you, yeah. do you, does your territory cover this, this area? Uh, our stops a uh, bit back that way. Some of my duties is uh, going out, checking people's permits, um, taking care of recreation areas and um, a lot of flora fauna surveys and sort of dolphins and doing baseline studies and things like that. Uh -huh. Dolphin trainer line. Yeah, mate. Did you ever use it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
There is a prehistoric atmosphere to the Wessels. There's not a turn of the head that doesn't feel like you're looking back in time. It was once in history more heavily populated with Aboriginal people. The few communities that are left have moved closer to the more tamed mainland. This eastern side of the Wessel Islands faces the full force of the dry season winds, which blow for about seven or eight months of the year. And as a result, big waves are continually hitting this sedimentary rock. Bit by bit, it's crumbling away and habitat is created for predatory fish and migratory fish in and amongst all this rubble down the bottom here. Yeah, but it's not just predatory fish who use sort of this environment. This has been inhabited by Aboriginal people for around 50,000 years and they would use these undercuttings and caves created by this falling of rock to live in. There's also a lot of really significant indigenous rock paintings on this island ones we can't show on camera and we can't take you to because of cultural sensitivities but there are actually rock paintings on this island that depict first contact so they've got uh, Macassan sailing ships greeting Aboriginal people on the island and that that Macassan trading Macassans were from the island of Sulawesi in Indonesia and this contact and this trade was happening in the 1600s which predates European colonization of the area by at least 200 years. Hey boys, I think we might go in that uh, beach there. It looks like a creek. There might be a mud crab or um, mud mussels in there, maybe. Hey, yeah, mate, sounds good. We'll follow you. Yeah, no worries. Looks like it's home to a uh, croc as well. But look at how big that does, you reckon? Oh, he'd be three metres, that one. Really? Yep. Three? Ooh, three metres. Big handprints. Here we go. So there's one right here. Here Oompa. we go. Bang. And that's what we're looking for, mud muscle. Sticky outlet. And there we go. They've got a thick shell, but there's still a lot of mollusk inside that's as well. Right. Yeah, boy, we'll put yeah. them on the fire. It's pretty good. All right. Just crack open. There's another one. Oh, that's a biggie. That's main, main size. Simo, he's this is, on. This is, my, uh, this is my clothes bag. This is going to be a real issue. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. They're everywhere. Boom. The boys are behind me in the background there trying to get a few little crabs, little rock crabs and green crabs. And what we're going to be doing is floating them off this deep edge here uh, in the hope that we might get some big reef fish, but in particular, blue bone. We're after blue bone there. A gorgeous looking fish and uh, five star table fish as well. So this could be an interesting little experiment. How'd you go, Morgs? Anything? Yep, got four or five already. All right, let's get stuck in. Make that six. Watch this technique. <laughs> got him. That's how you do it, brother. Side swipe technique. Watch this, Morgs. <laughs> Sweeper. The whitest bloke in Arnhem Land. <laughs> that is going to equal a blue bone groper. They don't muck around as soon as you hook them. They're off like a flash under a rock. Oh, now I've got to catch another crab. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa, that was a big one. Blue bone? Yep, big blue bone. Woohoo! Oh, oh. Get him in, Dad. Yeah. yeah. Blue bone groper, these guys are. Premium sports fish and table fish in this area. One of our favourite fish to eat because it's so uh, fatty. Mm -hmm. Heaps of um, omega 3s in it yeah. and puts up a pretty good fight too. Absolutely. And then the, look at the colours on that thing. You can see these teeth that they've got here, they're protruding. That what they do is they go along these rock walls and they can eat barnacles off the side of the walls and they eat all sorts of crustaceans. Really needs to see an orthodontist. <laughs> As we got closer to the tip, the cliffs start turning into hills and the hills start turning into beaches. Then it sort of just disappears into the sea. 
There's no ceremony to Cape Wessel. You just sort of arrive to this quiet and lonely place. It feels eerie and isolated. You get the feeling you haven't been invited. It's the sort of place that your mum wouldn't want you to go. A mate of ours who was a commercial fisherman for mackerel said that if we tuck around Cape Wessel, we'll find a shipwreck, which is just behind us, which is a Korean cargo ship, we're told. And uh, he said it'd be nice and calm, which it is. Um, and he also said watch out for a, quite a big crocodile, and he was right again, there is quite a big crocodile loitering out there somewhere. More pressingly, we're going to eat our catch today. Does how are we going to do this? All right, so the big one, I think we'll fill it, yep. take the slabs off it, and then uh, cook this one on the coals. Just hole? Yeah, Chuck just hole, yep. These bad boys? Yep, we'll just put them on the coals. All just right. up like that, and they should open up. There we go. I think, uh, This is what I've been looking forward to the most. Oh, that is beautiful. What would you, like an oyster, halfway between an oyster and a scallop. Amazing. After being on such a long journey throughout northeast Arnhem Land, it takes us a few moments after waking up to realise where we are. Today is a big deal for us because we were fulfilling a lifelong dream of ours to fish the fabled Cape Wessel. Daz had ranger duties elsewhere and was leaving us for a few days, so it was just Morgs and I left alone in this remarkable place. So Daz has left us. Uh, on our lonesome, so it's just me and Simo now. We've decided to target the Spanish mackerel. We know that we're in about 20 metres of water here and it goes up to about 10 around there. So there's a ledge somewhere along there. We're not quite sure where it is. And it's along these lines that the mackerel will uh, congregate. And basically we can target mackerel by using fast swimming lures. Red and white seems to be a really successful colour for Spanish mackerel. One of the reasons for that is the method in which they eat is when they come along behind a bait fish, they will savage with their teeth the, the bait, not eat it whole. They'll just cut it in half, do a U-turn and just pick up the pieces. It's also a uh, flaring of the fish's, bait fish's gills. gills yeah. like inside their gills is where all their blood system is and when they flare, uh, it's a trigger as well. So you go a bit quicker too with Spanish mackerel because they're another pelagic fish that get turned on by speed. A normal mode of attack is to come into a bait school and just absolutely slash their razor-like teeth through a pack and then come back and, as Morg said, collect the debris. But the faster the better. Yep. There it is. Whoa, whoa, I'm oh, on too. This could be Mackie. Are you off? No, I'm off. Oh, oh no, am I off? Yes, what is that? Oh, whoa, whoa. Whoa, it's Mackie. It's got to be. Shark on Uh oh. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come to daddy. There's lots of them around. There's a big school underneath here. Uh, you're gonna have to deal with yours more. Yeah, I'll be in one. Oh, that is Spanish mackerel. Fantastic. A couple of big Spanish mackerel. These guys are absolute speed demons, they're like torpedoes in the water. You saw from the power of that first run how much juice these guys have. Look at that side. 
these beautiful ripple colorations. That, that's their camouflage from down below. Any fish looking up at him down below, that'll camouflage beautifully with this rippling water. Absolutely glorious. And fish. beautiful eating too. Yeah. Those razor sharp Fabulous teeth. Those teeth. teeth aren't for holding and grabbing. Those teeth are for slicing and dicing. Sound like a oh. sound like a TV commercial for us. Info commercial. All right, let's get these boys back in. Okay, I'll call it 10 seconds this time. I'll be conservative. Once we engage here. All right, 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, Buzzer beater. Yeah. Watch. That is big. Oh, hang on. Big. Hang on. Oh, there's one. There's one. This is, this is the big girl we're after. It, oh, it's a shark oh, after the Mackie. It's a shark after that, whoa, man. Whoa. Oh, whoa. <laughs> so that was a monster Spanish mackerel hook. Even bigger shark. Big bronze whalers and tiger sharks out here, apparently. In this sort of environment, if you're onto a fish more than a few minutes, shark's going to pick up on those distress signals. So we're going to tie on some big surface lures now, and what that's going to do is bring the Spanish mackerel up to the top, and you'll see them actually breach the water and strike. It's in my size. Here we go. Oh! Oh! That's exactly... That's exactly what's going to happen. See, big Mackie has come out with his teeth to slash and he's cut my line. See how they just attack so fast. They just cut. They cut. Oh! 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 Coming in again, Flick. Oh! 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 What the? What is going on? Oh! 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 He caught it, man. Oh! 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 Here we go, we're on, we're on, we're still going here. We're still going. Wait, I, I, I had to duck out of the way like that. This is unbelievable. Uh, yeah. no, I jumped out of the way. <laughs> Holy cow. This, this is dangerous. This. Oh, this is a big boy to finish. Whoa. Morgan was in the water, he jumped out of the way of a Spanish mackerel that came through the boat. I've just got the pelvic region out of the way, shouldered arms, and Morgan's coming out the other side. He was swimming in the water trying to get back to the boat with this big mackerel on the other hand. I had my mackie on while I was underwater. <laughs> he was towing him one way. That was amazing. What? This is a goodie, too. That is a goodie. That was unbelievable. We were thinking we have to be cautious because one of them is going to come in. Oh, no. This is outrageous. Can we come close? Oh. What a session that had been oh. on the Spaniards. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is the thing. This thing, this would be 15 kilos. And this fella came at through the boat. He landed on that step there and went out the other side of the boat, missed the camo's leg. But can you imagine what those teeth would do if they took out a bit of a thigh? Yeah. You caught you did a fifth of that catch in the water. <laughs> There's a few sharks around too. Back in here, boys. In three, in two, in one. He's right. Oh, I'm not. 
That is a crazy session in anybody's language. Anyway, that's an hour's fishing from when we started trolling. Oh, reckless. And that, that is good. That's a shark eating what we just threw in. Three big sharks just There it is. Oh, oh, whoa. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I was just in that water literally <laughs> a minute ago. Let's go into shallow water. I can... Let's go to the kiddies' pool. Look at this. I can just see sharks under us. There are just sharks under us. Waiting for me to fall out again. <laughs> Whoa. Alright. <laughs> We've pulled into the safety confines of the shallower water after that Mackie session was getting a bit too uh, out of hand for our safety. We were talking about targeting mackerel initially, but actually we should have been asking mackerel how they target us. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but anyway, we're now going to move on to coral trout. Roger the that. same gear as mackerel gear, heavy, heavy big poppers, but the trout should be living right near those rocks. That's, the alley. That's it. That's exactly where a trout's going to live. Oh yeah, oh, there it is. Trout. Yep. <laughs> you got to be quick on them here, or they're going to bury you. You want a much bigger version than that, but that's coral trout. Here we go. That is a coral trout. You gotta get much bigger, but he's a perfect eating specimen. Look at that thickness in him. Look at that big lure he's hit too. That's how aggressive they are. Ah, ah, ah. Hold the um, fish. Hold the fish tight. Dead tight. Dead tight. <sighs> well, I thought it was gonna be safer fishing for trout than Mackie's, but there you go. That's the uh, the fish getting one back. That hook is well and truly embedded into my ring finger there. And um, it's probably not going to come out without some surgical help. You can deal with this when you get back to camp. <laughs> what a day. What a couple of days. It's just been spectacular out here. I mean, this is the end. It feels like the edge of the world out here, and it really is for Australia, I suppose. I haven't seen another boat for the last three weeks. Let's head back to camp because I am buggered. Wouldn't mind getting this hook out of me. Lying in a swag, eating something, and falling into a deep sleep. I don't think you're going to get a deep sleep with half a hook in your <laughs> But you can try. <laughs> find out more about East Arnhem Land and how to visit, go to www.eastarnhemland.com.au.